Hi everyone, welcome to Zcash Explained. Today we're going to take a look at the Nomada Zcash strategic partnership and why holders of Zcash and specifically Shielded Zec are going to be super excited about it. In this video, I'm going to cover what Nomada is and how it works, the proposed Zcash bridge, and lastly, a few details on the Nomada airdrop. But just before we get started, if you haven't already, hit the like button. It does help us out a lot and hit the bell button to be notified of future videos. So what is Nomada? And to find out, you can head to specs.nomada.net and there you'll find the full Nomada documentation. So Nomada is a sovereign proof of stake blockchain using Comet BFT. So if we skip over to Comet, we find Comet BFT is software for securely and consistently replicating an application on many machines. So this is how uh, Nomada secures its chain. It has two chief technical components a blockchain consensus engine and a generic application interface. And this engine is based on Tendermint. So that means that Nomada is compatible with uh, Cosmos and IBC. So if we head back, we see that this enables multi-asset private transfers for any native or non-native asset using a multi-asset shielded pool or MASP. It's derived from the sapling circuit. So if you can recall from a previous video, um, Sapling is the second and still active shielded pool on Zcash. And so the folks at Nomada have used that um, circuit and actually added um, some additional features to it. So we can take a look at the additional features which were added and get a bit a better picture of um, exactly the value that's provided by Nomada with their multi-asset shielded pool. So we have the section here, multi-asset shielded pool, and we can start with the cryptographic specification. So here we have the document, multi-asset shielded pool specification by HDX AG, based on the original Zcash spec by Dara Hopwood, Sean Bow, Taylor Hornby, and Nathan Wilcox. Right, so we're just gonna give a, a quick scan of this document. And primarily the key thing which we're gonna focus on is that user-defined assets may be added by varying the generator used as the value base um, using a custom asset generator for each distinct asset type. So this is new. On Zcash, uh, on the sapling, in the sap sapling circuit before, there was only one asset, which was Zec. But now um, we have a custom asset generator. And so if we scroll down a bit further, the identifier of an asset is a 32 byte string derived from the asset name in a deterministic way. My fun penguin token. The asset name is the thing users are going to know and refer to the asset by. From the asset name using, uh, it doesn't really matter from the circuit's perspective, but using a hash function. Um, so now we have a technical understanding of the exact changes which were made to the Zcash sapling circuit, which enables this multi-asset shielded pool on Nomada. We're going to head over to blog.nomada.net, and they've written a very good article here, which describes the MASP um, in more accessible terms. So they've got an explain like on five, and it says, at a very high level, the multi-asset shielded pool works in the following fashion. There exists two separate sets of assets, the shielded set and the transparent set. So just like Zcash, we have the shielded set, which contains notes and transactions made with these notes between uh, shielded addresses um, are indistinguishable from one another. So this shields the amount being transferred, the addresses which are being um, sent to and from, and it also has support for a transparent set. So just in the same way with Zcash, you can perform a de-shielding transaction and at a time you choose, you're also able to um, perform a shielding transaction. Cool, so let's continue on. And it actually uh, details very well um, yeah, the, the shielded set, shielding transactions, transferring assets. Uh, so definitely read up more there. 
So, so far, everything has been fairly similar to Zcash. The only difference has been this uh, user-generated assets feature. So you can imagine you have um, shielded Atom, you can now have shielded Ethereum, and of course, shielded Zec compatible here as well. Now, Nomada actually introduces a new component called the Convert Circuit. So there are two circuits in Nomada. The Multi-Asset Shielded Pool Circuit handles the minting and burning of shielded assets. The Convert Circuit is a separate one, which works in tandem with the MASP to allow for conversions between assets in the shielded pool which are valid. So at high level, the Convert Circuit enables assets to be converted without needing to leak privacy through unshielding and or any revealing metadata. And it accomplishes this through a, a mint and burn mechanism. This means that there is no need for a liquidity pool. So they've kindly provided an example for us. In this example, Alice shields 100 NAM Epoch 1 tokens in Epoch 1. She's aware of the convert circuit conversion table publicly available that gives her 1 NAM per 100 NAM she holds in the, in the shielded set per Epoch. In Epoch 2, Alice makes a shielded transfer through the convert circuit which gives her her 100 NAM plus an additional 1 NAM in Epoch 2 for a total of 101 NAM in Epoch 2. And so I believe the uh, epoch time is one day. Um, what is the reasoning for this? Uh, so you hold your tokens in a shielded set and you receive um, NAM as a reward token. The reason for this has been detailed in another blog post, privacy as a public good. So on Amada, the shielded set is subsidized so that the initial users do not depend on the existence of a sufficiently large shielded set. Instead, the subsidy is programmed to ensure that no matter the size of the shielded set, there is sufficient incentive for assets to enter the shielded set. So this is actually very cool what they've done. Um, they've provided an incentive for users to store their assets within the shielded pool. So it, it's uh, really a win-win. So users within uh, the shielded pool obviously um, get enhanced privacy uh, the longer they keep it there. And there's actually a very good video that explains this. Um, it's on Orchard Labs YouTube channel. I'll provide a link in the description. It's Zuko Wilcox on how to, prevent, uh, how to protect your crypto through privacy. And here he details privacy comes from shielded money at rest. So money in flight um, does not have uh, adequate privacy. So we can now get details on the airdrop of Nomada tokens to Zec holders. And to do so, we're going to head back to the um, proposed strategic alliance proposal. And at the bottom, you'll have a link to the Zcash community forums post made by Christopher. And he's given us an introduction, which we will actually come back to in a second. But for the moment, he gives us details on the um, intention for the Anoma Foundation to make a, a Genesis block proposal um, to donate a portion of Nomada tokens from that Genesis supply to the um, to their continuous public goods funding mechanism or through their funding mechanism to Zcash. And this would obviously be for projects that benefit both Zcash and Nomada and they're hoping that this would be possible via the Zcash Sustainability Fund. This is still a proposal, and if it is uh, voted through, um, or if it is happening, it would be in November of 2024. So if we continue on, we can now get some details on the airdrop. So the Anoa Foundation plans to make this Genesis block proposal. And so they are still in testnet. Um, the Nomada mainnet is slated to occur later this year. So later in 2023. So it's going to be a direct airdrop or allocation of NAM to current Zcash holders. They would like for it to um, cover both transparent and shielded deck. So transparent and sapling is fairly straightforward. They would like to also uh, make an airdrop to 
Orchard Zek holders, um, but this would require like some legal uh, investigation in, into how that could be possible. This is now the most important bit. So I'm going to color it green. Um, airdrop rates will be calibrated such that shielded Zek receives slightly more than transparent Zek. And so um, it would be uh, entirely your decision. Obviously, you should probably have your Zek shielded regardless. If we continue on, we now get some details on, in fact, sorry, just to go back, how this would occur was actually brought up in conversation. And so if I can zoom in here, I did ask how it would be possible for Zcash holders to um, like privately receive this airdrop. How does that occur? And Christopher gave a response. Um, we'll just copy the commitment set and the nullify tree from Zcash. And then you can use the convert circuit to convert some sec, copy it into NAM, and all without unshielding, you can claim the NAM airdrop. So that's pretty cool um, that he gave the, the full details there as well. So onto the bridge and we can now uh, just change this back. So another way the Anoma Foundation would like to contribute to the Zcash ecosystem is by building this bridge from Zcash to Namada. And then that would enable Zcash to become interoperable with Cosmos and Ethereum privately. So um, some points on the bridge, it should be trust minimized in the IBC style. It should be possible for Zek to flow across the bridge to any IBC enabled chain. Third, the bridge should integrate seamlessly with Z addresses. So the key point here is that if you're using Z addresses uh, on the bridge, then the sender and recipient is not known. However, um, I do believe in the bridge design, the amounts which are being transferred across the bridge uh, would be known. So um, a rough architectural sketch for this bridge is or it's already been made. Let me see if I can click the link. Oh, sorry. So yeah, Heliax has already um, given some details on the architecture of how such a bridge would occur. Um, I uh, also read that if this bridge were to happen, some changes to the uh, Zcash protocol would be required. And Christopher has also created, uh, he's done some brainstorming around the changes um, to the protocol that, that would be required as well. And so we've covered the public goods funding to the Zcash ecosystem, the airdrop of Namada tokens to Zek holders, the bridge. And so um, let's delve into the economics of Zek on Namada. So an interesting point that um, Christopher makes here is that with this uh, multi-asset shielded pool and the convert circuit, the shielded rewards becomes possible or this um, subsidy of uh, tokens to incentivize people holding their um, assets privately at rest. So this is essentially proof of stake for Zcashers. Um, you can still hold your Zek. So the Zek sapling and Namada sapling are about equivalent. And so you're also receiving NAM tokens to hold your sec privately on Namada. So these shielded set rewards are bringing proof of stake to Zcash, which is amazing. And um, so we have a scenario where Zcashers can uh, port their Zek onto Namada, receive tokens, um, but there is the drawback in that Namada is based on Sapling, and so they actually performed a trusted setup ceremony, and so it does come with that flaw uh, of needing a trusted setup, and you know there there is that risk still. So for a time, Zcash could sorry Zcashers could choose to use this um, shielded set rewards, and then 
when they feel that they've accumulated enough Nam, they could obviously port it back onto Zek and hold it in the orchard pool, which is uh, verifiable, or um, it did not have any trusted setup. So that's uh, how I see the economics working. If you have some ideas yourself, I'd be interested to learn in the comments. So um, we have some private bridge research collaboration ideas and proof of stake research collaboration. Obviously, Namada has, um, it's using Comet BFT and they've already done the research there. So if Zcash does decide to move over to um, proof of stake, the Enoma Foundation would be willing to share some of their research. And so he has some questions here, but we can now go back up. And obviously we've been mentioning the Anoma Foundation. And yeah, here we have the introduction. So uh, if you hadn't known, Christopher Goes actually wrote the first version of ZChain Explorer. And he's um, a member on the board of the Anoma Foundation, which also includes uh, Alison Yin, Adrian Brink, and Christopher Goes. So if you're interested to learn what Anoma is, you can go to anoma.net and it says here, an, an intense centric protocol for composable privacy, decentralized counterparty discovery, solving and atomic multi-chain settlement. Namada is uh, what they call a fractal instance on the Anoma protocol. And if you're interested in what else they do, you can go to the Anoma blog and there's a bunch of their research, like it's really interesting stuff, which is frankly above my head, over my head. <laughs> and um, something else to check out is their vision paper. So it's incredibly dense, but if you are interested, please do read this. And um, I've actually had a quick skim through and there's some very, uh, very interesting sections in this. So hopefully we've got details on how what Nomada is, how it works, the multi-asset shielded pool, the convert circuit, shielded set rewards, incentivization of um, holding your pri money privately at rest. And we've also got details on the um, airdrop to Zek holders, the private bridge between Zcash, Nomada, and then Cosmos and Ethereum. Obviously there's so much more that I could go into particularly around the integrated Ethereum bridge, which Namada has. If you guys would like to see that, um, let me know. Leave me a comment. Um, if you feel I missed anything out, please do leave a comment as well. I'd be interested to um, perhaps make another video and we can get some more details on Namada. So thank you for watching.